Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 328 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. All right, let me fill you in. I didn't check the I didn't I didn't see how yesterday's video did. I looked around noon and it wasn't doing as good as I expected. You know what it is? It's all oh, I, I discovered this. <laughs> A video it, it it can get 400 views or 40 views, and almost all of it depends on the picture I use and the title of the, the video I use. You know, I, I could sit here and recite the alphabet, and if I put the right title and the right picture, it'll get views. I'm not insulting anybody, but that's what I'm starting to think. All right, anyway. Okay, so yesterday, uh, I did the video. I talked about ultimatums. If nothing changes, and nothing changes. But when after, right after I did that video, I realized that I had left out probably the most important ultimatum. That final get clean or get out. I, the final one I got back in October of 2006. And I did a video on this. This is the one that got me clean. I, I, I talk about, I did this video, it's all set to download, but you're probably going to see this video that you're watching right now instead. I'm going to save that for tomorrow, uh, the continuation of yesterday's video, because I want, this is, this is fresh in my mind right now, and we all know how dreams fade. Yes, that's what I'm going to talk about. Now, I don't know if this has to do with PTSD. Off the top of my head, I, you know what, it's 3.30 it's, it's in the morning, I don't quite remember what PTSD stands for off the top of my head. If you're an addict, you know what drug dreams are. If you're recovering, a recover, if you're a recovering addict, you know what drug dreams are. When you're addic when addiction, everything's about drugs. So it doesn't. People that are still addicts that have never really gotten clean probably don't know what drug dreams are. Uh, well, they're they're the dreams they have every night probably. Uh, I'm not trying to sound like an ass, but seriously. Um, but people in recovery know what drug dreams are. It's 16 years two months and one week later and I'm still having these dreams I probably have these dreams about I'd say they come in bunches I, it makes me wonder if they're they're, they're stress related uh, and most of the time I wake up and it's you know you have we know when you have a nightmare and you wake up and all of a sudden you realize you're in your bed and it's like oh god thank god or or say you you're you wake up and you're panicked you're late for work oh my god you know and you, you go to jump out of bed and you realize it's Saturday and it's like, ah, that feeling. That's usually, usually the feeling I get after a drug dream. Uh, they, uh, drug dreams are what you what they sound like. Um, I'm going to tell you about the dream I just woke up from, not even about an hour and a half ago, that I was in the middle of, right? That's why I'm doing this video, before this dream fades. Because uh, it's already fading right now. Yeah, it's so weird how dreams fade like that, man. You know, they're so vivid in the first hour you wake up. And then tomorrow, I won't even remember this dream at all. Okay. Uh, most of the time, like I said, I feel uh, I, I feel blessed. I feel I'm thankful when I wake up. Because the dreams, in my dreams, it's usually like uh, I feel that craving again. I, I feel like a panic. Uh, like I don't have money and I need to get my my fix. That's usually what the dream has to do with. A lot of times I'll get the drug in these dreams and it'll be like, instead of white, it'll be blue. And there'll be a ton of it. And then a window come and it'll blow it all away. Usually, the, here's another weird thing. I have never actually used and gotten high in my dream. Never. Uh, usually, I'll, I'll, I'll use... I, I, occasionally, not often. Usually, the drug dissipates and disappears, or shrinks, or turns into something else. Seriously, you know how dreams are. What this means, I don't know. But other people, I guarantee you, other people in recovery know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but I've never gotten to the point where I like ingested it and felt that ooh, that that top of my head blow off. I've ne it's almost like dying in a dream. You know how you, they say you, 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 you'll never die in a dream because you, you, I don't know, or you'll die in real life, or I, 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 you know, I don't know. But I've never felt that high. I've never, and I'm, think, I'm thankful for that. I, I am extremely thankful for that because I do not want to feel, I don't need to feel, I don't want to feel that, that, that rush of uh, neurotransmitters. I am quite happy on a level playing a nice level flow of transmitters up and down, a little high, a little low every day. That's being in recovery. Okay, let me start off by saying, I'm gonna tell you about the dream I had last night. 
And I woke up feeling uh, <laughs> icky, disorientated, uh, and I still kind of feel it right now. And I, I, I have no idea why. Let me tell you this. My sister has never used drugs. This is one of the main reasons I think that I'm still very tight with my family, like, you know, that we, that I bonded back with my family again in recovery. You know, my mother trusts me, my, my stepfather trusts me, you know, we have, we have the most incredible relationship. Now, I am so thankful. One of the biggest fears when I was using is that my mother would, pa you know, my, my, my mother, my family would pass away and I would still be using it. I would have never have had any clean time with my mother, with, you know, they, they wouldn't have get, got to, to see the real Daryl again. Seriously, that's, that was my biggest fear. I remember telling uh, psychiatrists and counselors this. That was my biggest fear. Um, one of the reasons I think I've, I'm so close to my family now is because I, I guarded my sister like gold. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, she, <laughs> she, she's about five foot one. She, I'm, about, I'm over a foot taller than her, but she's a force of nature. Uh, you know, she, she learned some moves from me and stuff. And, uh, a lot, I think a lot of people feared her or feared me. Um, back when I was using, I would have parties at my house. I'd go down to New York city, come back like on a Friday afternoon with a shipment. And then I would throw a party at my house and I would make money. And sometimes my sister would be there and I, she never, you know, there was people that, that didn't use there and the, the word was out that you do not offer Daryl's sister anything you do not you know nobody comes near Daryl's sister with any of these these things you know that she was off to you know, God help anybody that offered my sister any of these drugs I knew what they were doing to me this was through my whole time using I never my little sister man I protected her like gold there's you know I never I would never let her use I never let her see the stuff um you know I disappointed her a lot I, unfortunately, I used in her house or her bathroom and stuff like that, but uh, I guarded her like gold. But anyway, this dream last night was kind of weird, and she was in it. Uh, it was about a drug test last night, and the whole, I, I had a whole stream of dreams uh, about driving a truck again. And uh, some, it's like somebody was hiring me, and it was the, the person was like a combination of my, fa my original father, who died when I was nine, my stepfather. One of my bosses, you know, he was a kind of like a blend of all, I, I can't identify him. You know, he was some kind of authority figure and he was hiring me. And I had to take a drug test. So I took the drug test, but I was still using in this dream. You know, so I was like, cool, I'll, I'll give him this, this, this drug test and then I'll just go and use. And I was using cocaine in the dream. I don't remember using it in the dream, but I knew that's what I was going to go use. I don't remember. Maybe I did in the dream and I already forgot about it. Anyway, so I gave the test and everything was fine. But then the next day came and he, he wanted another test and I had already, I had used overnight. And so I, I, I was panicking uh, and I had all these, this is, this is a dream. This is the dream I had just a couple hours ago. And I was thinking of giving him like water, colored water. I never did this. I, I never faked a drug test in my life. But I was thinking of giving him water or something like that. And then all of a sudden I realized my sister, my sister had to take a drug test too. Why, you know, why? I don't know. I don't think my, I don't know if my sister's ever taken a drug test in her life. She's never done drugs. But uh, in my dream, I asked her for a drug test. I asked her for some of her, to, to, for some of her sample for mine. And she's like, okay. So we start walking and I'm going to get a sample glass you know, to put my, to give her, to put my sample in. And I look up and the cupboard is about 30 feet up the side of the wall. And there's no way for me to reach up and get the cup to give her. And that's, where, <laughs> that's where the dream ended. And here's the weird part, man. I woke up feeling, uh, sometimes this happens. I woke up feeling guilty. Like I, I was still, I was still in this, this, this using zone. Uh, like I was still, it felt like I was, I felt, I felt that guilt come back. Like I had been using or that, 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 like I was deceiving and manipulating. I felt dirty when I woke up and I only, I still feel off right now, an hour or two later and this will fade. This will fade. But usually, usually I wake up and I'm like, oh, thank God. I feel, you know, I feel blessed. I'm like, oh my God, I've been clean for 16 years. Thank God. That was a dream. That was a nightmare. 
usually that's how it, they turn out. But last night's, so go figure. I don't know. If you guys know if this has something to do with PTSD, it feels like it has something to do with, with uh, PTSD, stress. Uh, what's it? I, I still don't. I can't figure out what PTSD stands for right now. Uh, anybody that is in recovery will know exactly, exactly what a drug dream is. And it's something, you, you know, this is how strong the, the brain, they say the brain is rewired when you're using, you know. And uh, like I said, there's still a lot of, uh, this is why I have to be on guard every day of my life. I can never say, oh, that's it, I conquered drugs, I won, I'm clean, I'm forever clean. No, man, the day you do that is the day you pick up again. That's what they tell you. You know, you are always on guard every day. You are in recovery. It's a continuing thing. And uh, I heard, I've heard, I've been to plenty of NA meetings where I heard somebody with 20 years, 25 years, talking about how they just relapsed and seeing them crying and the guilt and their lives destroyed after 20 years clean. And I try to listen. So I remember every time I hear that story, a story, a story like that, in these NA groups, I try to listen so intently because God, God forbid I ever throw away that many years anyway that's drug dreams for you there'll be another video coming up a continuation of yesterday's video where i tell you about the most important ultimatum i ever got the one that actually literally got me clean and sober all right you guys have a good wednesday